it's looking like it's going to be a long night tonight we are just starting the lambing season so um, I've been going around doing the local farms uh, I was out last night till quite quite uh, quite late um, I've shot quite a lot of foxes already this year lots about this year um, also I was out early this morning um, went out and made Gary we were after a uh, couple of fallow bucks that we'd seen on one of his bits of ground so there's a couple of big bucks there and uh, we went out to see if we could have a look and find one of them and it was actually a nice morning this morning but um, this evening the rain's come in it's light rain so it's not gonna be much fun tonight I don't think but this morning it was nice and sunny we had a little wander around lovely morning and uh, with the thermal just after first light we uh, we spotted the bucks we circled round to get onto them they were in a very awkward position because uh, there was nowhere really to approach where we could get a clear shot um, we kind of ended up coming round on them uh, where they were just in a small spinny and they were hunkered down for the day they just bedded down for the for the day just to sit in the sun and annoyingly they sat on the opposite side of the cover to where we approached from but we could still see them through the thermal so we had to reroute walk all around the fields in a big arc and come back over the uh, the sort of the brow of the of the field and um, as we walked up we could just see the tips of the antlers of the uh, the deer couched down and Gary gave them a little shout a couple of times and got them kind of looking round and finally clapped his hands and they stood up and I was able to knock down the, the better of the two bucks with um, a neck shot dropped it on the spot so that was a nice buck to to get probably weighed around about I would think about 120 to 130 pound um, and yeah we'll make, uh, we'll make good eating and um, a nice nice trophy head too so I was pretty pretty happy with that that was using the 260 my custom rifle uh, and one of the element scopes the element nexus scope so tonight I'm going to be using uh, the uh, Mauser M12 nice little rifle that's in 243 and I'm going to be using that with um, the infrared TH50 scope which is a thermal scope now this bit of ground that I'm off to tonight is uh, a piece of ground that I haven't actually shot it for about a year it's a small holding and I always just come up for two or three visits just before he starts lambing up there so I'm pretty optimistic tonight we'll see something um, so yeah we're just heading off there now hopefully I won't run out of fuels <laughs> not got that much I should have probably filled up beforehand but there you go so that's our mission for tonight right here we are
there. So I'm um, going to walk up to the next gate, have a quick look over that, and just check this first field because this is where the ewes will be. There's a few uh, ewes out in this bottom corner of the field and uh, there's also quite a few rabbits out but no foxes. Right, we'll hop over and we go up the top of the field. There's a good place to wait there um, but the calls are out so I'll have a look up there. Right, so this is where I like to set up. I say like to because I've shot this farm now for several years, this time of year, just before lambing. Um, and there's not an awful lot of cover and there's also there's limited safe angles in which you can shoot here. Now I've got a line of trees in front of me, there's a little stream runs down through in there and then there's rising ground that goes up behind. So that way is about the only kind of safe shot that I can get here. Going that way, it goes down to a quite a busy road at the bottom and there's several houses dotted around me, sort of pretty much all around, but that is pretty much the only safe direction I've got here. Now from experience, I know that if I put the cooler out and uh, fire that up, I would normally be able to pull something from this stream. So in other words, um, from either end of this tree line because they tend to use it as a bit of a, uh, a track to go up and down or, or sometimes you might pull them through from the field behind. Very occasionally you might pull one in from behind so it's always worth keeping an eye out behind but 90% of the time they'll come up from that stream. So that's what I'm going to do now. I've got the rifle set up here. You'll notice there's a little bit of cover um, just down here. It's only uh, just a bit of a fallen tree and some bracken and that so I've kind of plonked myself on the end of that just to sort of um, try and hide myself a little bit. It's pretty dark, but foxes are pretty sharp. So uh, we'll fire the cooler up now and see, see what happens. This tree line, by the way, is only about, about 80 yards in front of me. So uh, you need to be quite kind of switched on because foxes can quickly come in and then just be on you in no time. So basically what I've done is uh, I've come out about 40 or 50 yards from where I've got the tripod set up just behind me there. Now the wind is kind of going in this sort of direction. So um, I'm gonna plonk the cooler here, which will be sort of just to my right when I'm standing looking at the trees. So the idea being that the scent will just drift off into that corner and anything coming in from this way or down that, tree line won't pick up my scent. Well, that's the plan anyway. Right, so before I start calling, I always like to have a quick look around just to uh, make sure there's nothing already out. So the last thing I want to do is start the caller and then find that there was a fox 20 or 30 yards from me and then game's up. Next thing I want to do, make sure my scope's on, my rifle's ready. So I think I'm going to go for uh, Screaming Rabbit. Um, yeah, Screaming Rabbit, cool, I like this one. I use this one quite a lot um, 
I tend to have the best of luck with this one. But different areas, different, um, you know, kind of different foxes, I guess. People are going to get different results, and some people find other calls work better. But I, I just like this one. There's lots of rabbits around, so it's a natural kind of sound for a fox to hear. So. So the call is going. I'm just going to keep my eyes out constantly up and down this tree line as well as behind just in case. The other thing I'll do is I'll put this in my pocket because the call is only quite close. I can mute it the moment I see a fox coming in. And uh, the other thing about putting it in your pocket like that is you don't see this light. If you can, if you can see that on the camera, probably not on the uh, night vision, but the screen lights up. So, but I don't want to be uh, giving the game away to anything as it comes in. All right, so just a few short blasts like that to begin with, just to see if we can get anything's attention. thing about having the cooler in your pocket like that as well is I'm not fumbling around as soon as the fox comes in to find a pocket to put the cooler in it's already in the pocket I just mute it and I'm straight over to the rifle without having to chuck it on the floor or, or whatever it's all just little things that save time it came straight out of that tree line they always do I don't know what it is but that's um yeah that's just obviously that's where they go to and fro so that worked lovely using the thermal scope like that it's lovely and clear in this even though it's a little bit bit of rain in the air um uh yeah but it was yeah doddle of a shot that one to be honest it was only about 70 75 yards um so yeah I didn't bother zooming in just straight at it bang straight over so I'll give it another couple of minutes just to quieten down and I'll uh, try the cooler again see if I can bring anything else in something else coming in here. I'm not quite sure what that is though. No, that's a badger. That's a badger that's just come in there. So a lot of people ask me how far can you actually identify uh, a fox from a badger using something like these. These are the pulsar mergers, by the way. Well, the long and short answer to that is it's not so much about recognising the body shape, although probably realistically 
probably about 200 yards I would say 150 200 yards you can clearly see what it is maybe a little bit further in certain conditions but it's more about the way things move and the shape and the body temperature things like that now you can see looking at that badger there that it's actually quite a lot lower to the ground than a fox well saying that <laughs> Not, not as low as the one that it stood next to, but that one's not feeling too well at the minute. But as a general rule, um, badgers are a little bit lower to the ground and they've also got a very distinctive kind of oval shaped back. Uh, unlike a fox, a, flock, a fox is generally flatter and it moves differently as well. Badgers tend to lumber along and uh, foxes tend to be constantly changing direction, sort of sniffing around, a bit more active than a badger. And the other thing that is a giveaway, especially further out, is that badgers tend to give off a bit more heat. Um, I don't know if their coats maybe aren't quite so well insulated as a fox's, but they tend to be brighter in the thermal, whereas foxes tend to be a little bit more sort of ghosty, darker kind of um, kind of light. <laughs> that makes sense. A bit more kind of well, yeah, just darker. They're not as bright as a badger. That's what I'm trying to say. Oh, that's a vixen. Nice chest shot, as expected. It's only a little thing, but uh, still another good one to knock over. Right. Okay, I'll take that uh, down to the farmyard. Well, I'll take it down to the gate, actually, leave it there for the farmer in the morning when he comes and does his looker in. Right, well as you can probably hear there's a road that, um, that runs just down the bottom here and that splits the farm in two so uh, I don't think there's anything much else around on this side of the farm so I think what I'll do is I'll hop over the other side and take a look over there just see if we can pull something in that side. Well, certainly a few rabbits out in this field. Blimey, there's loads of them. Well, that one, he was uh, just out in the field. Um, I don't know where he turned up from, I just looked around and there he was. And uh, I managed to just get onto him, he was just starting to disappear out across the field, but I managed to get onto him quick and uh, get a quick shot. He was about 120, 130 yards, something like that. So, uh, yeah, two in the back. Pretty good sized fox this one. That's a dog fox. Again, nice shot straight through the shoulder. Good. So the other bit of kit that I'm using this evening, which I really like, I use it all the time, is the Recon tripod. This is the Recon CT1 tripod. And um, it's a nice stable shooting rest that. I think it's brilliant for folks since it's the best kind of tripod or shooting sticks that I've found. I love it. Uh, but the brilliant thing about it is, is that you can leave your rifle set up in there like that, clamped in place, pointing in the direction you expect to see something. And uh, it leaves your hands free for calling or spotting. 
I'm a fag. I'm a drink. I'm just kidding about the drink. I'll wait until I go in for that. So these ewes are about to drop. You can see they're pretty big. They're due next week. So um, I think what I'll do is I'll give it a week or so and come back once he started lambing and uh, see if that's uh, drawn anything into the area. But uh, with a couple for the evening, so that's better than nothing. So I think the farm will be happy. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the episode. Thanks for watching and please subscribe.